everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and today i will discuss on a very beautiful topic how to attend spiritual programs how to attend festivals or satsang as we say right so the festival may be there or it may not be there but wherever there is discussion on god that place is like having a festival all right so if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him in the satsang <laughs> all right so the other day somebody asked me that we go to so many programs so many holy 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 programs but sometimes we we are still caught up in our own world yes so what to do how to just not physically go to a spiritual retreat or a satsang or a sadhu sangha and how to how to be there and how to feel it and how to extract maximum from there so i used to remember in 2011 when one of my shiksha gurus used to visit us in chennai he used to tell everyone that now i am here for the next two days suck whatever you can from me suck out everything from me he used to say this that means he used to tell that whatever you want to know about spirituality ask me and take it from me you will not get it later <laughs> of course he didn't say that but that's what he meant so we used to do that so now whenever we are going to a temple or to a holy program the first thing we need to do is switch off our mobile should i repeat <laughs> switch that damn mobile off no best is not to take the mobile only but that may not be possible of course everything is possible if you if you want right so best is do not take the mobile but if you want to take the mobile take it and keep it off switch it off or keep it in the car lock it put it in the locker or put it in the dustbin put it in the garbage wherever you want to put it put it but do not keep the mobile on why i am saying no this is not because the sound will disturb god or something like no it's not because of that it is going to disturb you forget god for think of yourself charity begins at home so if you are only disturbed yes what's happening all the time some unnecessary messages are coming in whatsapp groups right oh who committed suicide where who come who ran away with who who is going to start the next world war all unnecessary useless rubbish garbage of the world keeps coming through the whatsapp groups so we go to a holy place or to a center in our city which is nearby our home and then we keep getting all these rubbish messages it doesn't work like that even if you don't want the mind will say oh look there's something very interesting we all know what level of what kind of so called interesting messages come in whatsapp group, groups right so best is if we can totally switch off the mobile because then there are no distractions and then from our part also we do not feel like checking facebook or checking whatsapp or going on calling somebody unnecessarily i'm saying because see if you want to use your mobile or check social media you don't have to go to a satsang sit in your home and do that yes <laughs> so if you are going there then ensure that the purpose of going there is fulfilled and for that you have to ensure that there there are no distractions you see <laughs> because if there are distractions your mind is already distracted from from the home you are coming with all those gossip of who got married to who what's going on in cricket blah 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 <laughs> and then when you come to the temple even there you are like oh let's see what's going on how many notifications i have got yes how many people liked my morning post or who won the world cup you see so best is switch off the mobile then the second thing that we need to do is we need to sit in the first bench <laughs> oh my god there are no benches people are only sitting in the ground there yes yes i know that but what i used to do is 
wherever my guru would be speaking i would directly go and sit in front of him directly i am saying that place is like reserved <laughs> of course many of my god brothers also used to i there but they couldn't <laughs> of course they were very humble that uh, because of their humility they used to leave that seat for me but i always used to have this no 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 you should sit in the first bench if you are sitting at the last position of the lecture hall then it is as good as you are absent all right so for that you have to ensure that you go bit before time should i repeat you have to ensure that you go bit before time if the lecture is starting at 10 o'clock and you reach at 10 o'clock oh my god you will not get any place to sit there so reach there by 9:45 or maybe by 9:30 you can take darshan later that is not important of course that is important but this is more important because there are millions of people who go to temple and just see god nothing happens there why because they do not sit in the lecture and hear about god if you do not hear about god you will not know how great he is should i repeat if you do not hear about god you will not know how great he is then how will you develop a desire to see him because we only like to see great personalities you or me may be walking in the street nobody may see but suppose there's a great cinema star or big politician walking yes everybody will be like oh sir madam can i get your autograph why is that because they are considered to be great of course that's a separate topic they are great or not but i'm saying they are considered to be great so unless you are convinced of the greatness of god you will not have a desire to see him even if you see go and take darshan you will be like okay it's nice not bad <laughs> okay so the second thing after switching off your mobile is that's most important then the next thing is wherever the lecture is going the first seat should be yours go bit earlier and sit there and so you should be sitting like this your guru is sitting here and you are sitting here so it should be like you are putting your mouth like this <laughs> just do it man it will be an experience i am saying okay and oh, oh yeah i forgot to tell something this is before going to the satsang program make sure the previous day night you sleep on time because generally the tendency of the materialistic mind at least for me it's like that i don't know for you is we do not like to hear spiritual topics generally that's the tendency of the mind and then what happens when we are hearing then we get a tendency to sleep like this have you seen people in satsang programs going on going and dozing why that's happening is because number one reason is we are generally not interested to hear so we feel that's very dry or very boring and the second thing is we did not sleep on time the previous day so suppose tomorrow you have a plan to go to a satsang program then make sure today night by 9 or by 9:30 you are on bed if you are sleeping at 2 o'clock in the night and the satsang is at 7 a.m in the morning and you are getting up at 5 and you are rushing at 6:45 what you will do by going there you will just go and sleep there <laughs> yes that is what happens so we need to ensure that the previous day we sleep properly and then on that day we go into the first seat and we listen do not compromise this there should be a race for who go goes and sits there and this is not of ego this is not out of some ego that oh i will sit in that seat na in front of my guru no it's not like that that shows your serious desire to come in contact with the what do you say na the divine vibration that will tell god now when god sees this that oh you are very sincere to learn and listen about him then god will be like oh he's nice man <laughs> then i will take care of him but if you are like oh sitting at the last corner and you are checking facebook or whatsapp then that's what i said better do it in home don't waste time going to satsang programs okay you are just wasting your petrol and your taxi money you don't need to do that so if you are going make sure you get 1000% out of it then the next thing what we should do is take a pen 
and a paper and make notes yes make notes my guru used to always say that why are you not making notes <laughs> most of us are totally distracted in this world even if you switch off your mobile but the mind is always going ah oh. <laughs> who is having an affair who got promotion oh why did i didn't get that yes when will i go here when will i go there it's total disaster actually so when we have a pen and a paper and no making notes in mobile okay remember mobile is already off so we will have a pen we can have a beautiful pen take a parker pen <laughs> i love parker man take a beautiful parker pen and take a beautiful notebook I have a notebook here. Which company is this? Premium notebook series. My God, beautiful it is. By seeing it only, I feel like writing something. Okay, so take a notebook and take a pen and give heading. Bhagavad Gita, sloka, number, chapter number. <laughs> Or if it is Shrimad Bhagavatam, then you type write like this. SB one point one point one. Shrimad Bhagavatam, first canto, first chapter. First verse. Should we do the recite? Should we recite once again? Yes. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadesa Yaton Vaya Ditaratas Charthe Shubhigya Swarat Tene Brahma Ridaya Dikavaye Muhyanti Atasuraya. Half of the sloka. Remaining, you could. <laughs> Let me see how many remember. I have quoted this so many times. Okay. So then you write the name of the sloka also. Yes. Or at least you write in short. You may not write the full sloka, but write it like this. Then, as your guru is going on speaking, keep making notes like this. And you can make notes different ways. You can just simply uh, keep uh, writing uh, every other two sentences. Or what I used to do is, uh, we can make lot of pictorial notes. Okay, for example, if the guru is telling a story, then. we can make a diagram suppose he is telling how uh, how how the illusory energy traps you in this world yes so you can make photo of a man yes with two hands two legs <laughs> bit tummy out <laughs> and then there's a uh, there's a rope around him or there are shackles yes as bhagavad gita says that man the living entity is bound by shackles of desire kama krodha lobha moha matsara all these six anarthas so then what happens is you can pictorially understand that this is my situation when scriptures is telling that a materialistic person is miserable it is telling about me not about anybody else okay so we need to make the notes like this and then we can go on proceeding and then topic wise we can also make notes so for example if you have a big notebook then you can uh, suppose the guru is talking about lust today then after two months he is again talking about lust then after three months he is again talking so you can tear up the pages and you can staple and put it in a special place okay about lust these are the topics about greed these are the to- these are these are the uh, notes about envy these are the notes so when we deal do like that in our life when we have problems suppose we are feeling uh we are feeling very lusty for a member of the opposite sex then we can directly go and read that oh my god <laughs> yes ravana was totally vanished his entire name fame was destroyed even though he was so uh, such a powerful person externally physically but nothing remained he completely perished duryodhan the epic example also of greed totally perished so we can keep writing examples and we we should keep connecting the stories Okay, so for example, in the Bhagavatam you will find one shloka pertaining to one topic. Then you will find the same topic, some similar shloka for that topic in the Gita. So then you connect it. Then in some Upanishad you will find it. Then you connect it to there. Okay, so that is how you make notes. So individually you make notes and collectively you make notes. Okay, so that is what you have done. And now the most important thing is after the lecture is over, ask questions. and these questions should not be like oh you said this i don't agree to that no we should not ask questions like that we should ask questions in a mood of humility we are the only aim of asking questions should be to understand what this what the speaker is telling okay 
we should never ask questions to test the knowledge or the intelligence of the speaker we should never ask questions which are beyond the scope of his knowledge which means we should not ask him that oh what do you think there will be a world war between india and pakistan yes world war <laughs> i'm very sure he would not have any knowledge on this that's such a stupid question to ask but there are people who also ask these questions okay but now the guru may link it to some spiritual thing oh this is like this is like that but it's such a waste of time to ask all these things and we we should ask questions pertaining to that topic which means that if somebody is talking about lust that day let's suppose somebody is talking about the ramayan so we we can ask we should ask questions pertaining to that topic of course we can also ask him that oh in the ramayan this happened but in the mahabharat that happened how do you see both of this that is fine but uh, we should not go and ask him some question oh here there this <laughs> unnecessary question which is not related to the topic okay so that is during the question answer session then the next thing this is big i am telling you <laughs> when everybody has left the place when that means when the guru says ki okay now the lecture is over it's it's done you can go don't go from there you sit there and catch hold of your guru and keep asking him questions this is what i used to do man <laughs> once upon a time i will still do now <laughs> and that is the the those are the biggest those are the most beautiful memories which you will have at least i have i used to uh, ask so many questions to my gurus around 2 hours 3 hours my god so many questions oh my god of course i also used to ask my mother sometimes but then she used to say oh you are asking too many questions you see <laughs> so a genuine guru will always like the disciple enquiring अथातो ब्रह्म जिज्ञासा अबाउट दी हायर ट्रूथ अ जेनविन गुरु विल नेवर एवर एवर टेल यू दैट ओ वाई आर आस्किंग टू मेनी क्वेश्चन यस द गुरु मे से दैट आई हैव आंसर्ड योर क्वेश्चन टिल नाउ दिस इज द लेवल दैट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड एंड योर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच यू हैव आस्ड इज बियॉन्ड योर लेवल टू अंडरस्टैंड आई मीन आई कैन गिव यू द आंसर बट यू कैन नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दैट्स अ वेरी हाईली एलिवेटेड स्पिरिचुअल टॉपिक सो देन द गुरु मे नॉट आंसर बट दैट्स परफेक्टली फाइन दर इज नो प्रॉब्लम सो आफ्टर एवरीबडी लीव्स they say the class begins after the class ends <laughs> okay don't just run away oh it's go we are go going now the movie is starting yes kon banega karodpati is starting but you are not there na you are not going to become karodpati somebody else is going to become why should you waste your time watching somebody else becoming a millionaire it's such a waste of time my god so when everybody leaves go and catch hold of your guru and ask him questions the guru should become frustrated with you <laughs> ओके ऑल द गुरु शुड से बस कर माय बाप प्लीज लीव मी इट शुड हैपन लाइक दिस इफ इट डजंट हैपन दैट मींस द सम प्रॉब्लम यू सी ऑफ कोर्स वी डोंट नीड टू डू दैट एवरी डे वी डोंट हैव टू कीप वॉकिंग आवर गुरु फॉर 6 आवर्स बट वी शुड कीप आस्किंग क्वेश्चंस इफ वी हैव इफ वी इफ वी डू नॉट हैव क्वेश्चंस दैट्स फाइन बट देयर इज अ सेइंग दैट इफ यू डू नॉट हैव एनी क्वेश्चंस देन इट हैज ओनली टू मीनिंग्स यू हैव इदर यू हैव अंडरस्टूड एवरीथिंग और यू हैव नॉट अंडरस्टूड एनीथिंग ओके so make sure that we ask those questions and we should ask the questions in a very humble mood we should not just try to uh, boast our knowledge of questions yes i know this i know that what do you speak of this that's very wrong that is one of the aparads actually we should never do that and then what we should do once the lecture is over we have made notes and the question answers are also over and we have also left the guru we should take their blessings before going and then we should go and take prasad what is prasad prasad is that which is offered to god the bhoga that food which is offered to god is called bhoga and then when god accepts it and we accept it after god has accepted that is not known as prasad for the western audience and prasad can be there in many forms it can be some form of sweet like halwa or kheer or whatever you call it or it can be khichdi or anything it is and when you are taking prasad discuss whatever your guru said in the lecture do not go and discuss who is getting married to whom or who is going to win the cricket match okay those things can wait for later times also but during when you are sitting during the prasadam time make a circle you your wife your mother your father and your son <laughs> 
you will all sit and you will discuss what the guru said the wife will tell today he said this the mother will also say something <laughs> and you will also say yes and if you are a man watching this you must summarize the entire lecture you must ask the wife your wife my dear lady <laughs> what did you listen or you were gossiping with your co you know, with somebody who is sitting next to you so then you can ask your son hey were you busy <laughs> seeing the video game or seeing facebook or you were actually listening you can ask your father my dear father what about you <laughs> okay go and ask them everything force them it is a duty of your man uh, if you are a man it is your duty even if you are not still it's your duty <laughs> okay so the, the, this is the way by which you spend uh, the time during prasadam okay or when you are taking prasadam if some other senior is there go and sit with him and you can discuss with that person also and then at the end what you should do you should take darshan of god <laughs> that's the last thing you see and then you should also sit there and chant some mantras do not come from the temple without chanting one round of mantra whatever whichever temple it is whatever it is but go and chant a mantra at the end and come out from there and when you come out before taking the darshan you should go and pray to god that oh god may i get the inspiration to come here again the next time <laughs> please arrange my life in such a way that i still feel the need to come to you that is what you should be praying apart from the other things of course queen kunti says in the prayers which is there in the shrimad bhagavatam that let my consciousness flow towards you like the ganges flows she says this about lord krishna of course so we should also try to <laughs> memorize some of the prayers of queen kunti if possible we should understand how helpless our situation is in this material world and then we should pray to god to lift us up from this material uh, situation which we are in and how that happens that only happens when we take shelter of god by chanting his name reading the scriptures visiting holy places visiting satsangs like you are doing now <laughs> okay watching videos like this in youtube <laughs> okay so this is how you do and when you go out from the temple you should have a very grateful heart you should feel that this is the best thing i have done in last 10 years <laughs> every day of the satsang should be like this okay and when you are going to a program or there can be some people who are shouting quarreling or gossiping or criticizing somebody do not put your ears there whoever that person is ignore it for the time being okay and then go to your home <laughs> and then as soon as you reach home thank god again all right so this is what i wanted to say this is how you should uh, visit satsang programs all right oh yeah and the last thing i forgot to say that uh, if you do not have uh, books like bhagavad gita or bhagavatam whenever you are going to the temple you can ask them do you have these books all right and you can uh, go and take the books from them also and another thing you can do is invite some senior speaker to your home and then Uh, you can make a community of four five families together and then that senior can come and give some lecture there all right so these are the uh, practical things which we can do and which we need to do and which we should do when we attend a uh, satsang all right so there you go if you're new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and there you go attend satsang programs elevate yourself elevate your consciousness okay and remember god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and the most important thing in a satsang is to go and sit in the lecture and hear about god that is most important oh i'm tired man bye bye <laughs>